Hello, I'm Chris Tanis. I'm a KMP developer, and we're going to continue our series of how to program from the ground up uh, with data structures. Oh, yeah, tech support. They called, but I was out. I had to go to lunch, and they called, and so I had to reschedule. Probably be back next Tuesday, so I'll get that done as soon as possible. Hopefully, we close that thing. Okay, uh, so we're continuing on. We are in the section here called data structures, and we're like, you know, just talking about things that are representing um, other things, human things, because all we got is these these digits, these ones and zeros. That's all we got. On and off, on and off. But we can do all this clever stuff to it. Oh, let's do the first one that's clever. So positive integers are, you know, it's like really obvious. Like, okay, one place means, you know, the singles place is you know, one digit, and then the you know, twos, and then the fours, and the eights, and the sixteens, thirties. That makes sense. But how do you do negative? How do you do like a negative number? That's odd. How do you do that? Okay, well, you could use like one bit, you know, to say, you know, we use one bit out of those things to say it's a sign. I mean, that is one way, but you get literally half your values get chopped off because you're using it as a sign. I wonder if there's a, if there's a way that we could not lose half our values and uh, still, you know, uh, have a sign there. Can we, is there something we could do? Well, some clever, clever, clever people <laughs> came along with this thing called a two's complement, which is basically like flipping all the bits and adding one, and then, you know, having it cascade through. That is the complement. <laughs> it's, it's so silly. Just means flip the bits, add one. That's the complement. So, our friend, Ben Eater, he's going to walk through it. I'm going to just skip through a little bit of it, but you should go watch this video to understand why is two sculpt is so clever. And he gives it away here. He's like, two sculpt is the most common, the common technique. It is pretty much the only technique now because it's just works better than all the other ones. Uh, and he'll get into what, two, what a two sculpt is. Uh, is because it's relatively easy to implement in, in hardware with all the gates, all the and or nots and stuff. So it's super fast and cheap. And it makes addition and subtraction easy using negative numbers and positive numbers. So um, I just want to say out before we get involved, this playlist here, Building a Board Breadboard Computer, if you go through this entire playlist and like not just watch it, but build it, if you build it, it will take you about a month, maybe a month and a half. If you go fast, uh, several hours a day, <laughs> but if you do it, you will know, and this thing's like, I don't know how much it is, but it's cheap. You will, it's less than a price of a, a college course on this advanced college course. You don't have to know college course to do this stuff. It's, it's very doable, totally straightforward, doable, especially how he guides you and he shows you every, where everything goes, how you can wire it up and how it's supposed to work. And how to use this equipment, how to use, you know, how to use all this, like this, use the scope like this, how to set it up. It's awesome. And if you go through this, you will make, you only have to do it once and you will know how a computer works from everything. And Mary goes, it's just, I don't get it. It's like nothing's magic. There is no magic. It's just clever stuff like this. Familiar with binary. For example, this is, you might already be familiar with binary. For example, this is uh, 101 is equivalent to five in decimal. And that's because this is the ones place. This is the twos place, fours place, eights place, 16s, 32s, 64s, and 128s. <laughs> and we have a one in the fours place and a one in the ones place. He forgot was double A with double over 32. Okay. Four oh, plus one he is, didn't forget. Is <laughs> so this is fine, but how might we represent a negative number? So let's say we wanted to represent negative five. Well, there's a couple ways we can do that. One way is to take this uh, 128th place, and instead of using that as the 128th place, use that as a sign. So change this to a one here to indicate that this is negative, and then the rest of it is the same. That makes sense, right? One, zero, one. And so this would be five here, and then instead of this- That's called a naive, a naive approach. And this is the way they did this for a long time. This representing uh, 128, it represents that the, that the number is negative, so negative five. Now, of course, it's important to know how many bits you're working with, right? Because if we're only using four bits, then a five would be zero, one, zero, one. That's equal to five. Uh, but then we're going to use this this top bit here. In this case, uh, we're only using four bits, so the top bit is this fourth bit. And so a negative five might be a one, one, zero, one. Um, and now instead of this being the eighth place, 
this is actually representing the sign. So this would be negative 5, and this would be 5. So it's important to know how many bits you're working with so that you know which bit is the first bit, and therefore which bit indicates what the sign of the... Right, how, what are we representing? Are we representing uh, neg the signed? So this is the sign bit. This is where they get that, na that signed keyword. Are we going to use it as sign, or is it going to be unsigned? Meaning if we're using all the bits. <laughs> that's, where that, that's where that keyword comes from. The number is. So to keep going with this example, we can look at uh, just regular counting in binary here. Of course, if we have all zeros, zero, 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 that's equal to zero. Uh, and then if we have a one in the ones place, that's equal to one. We have a one in the twos place, that's equal to two. A two and a one, that's equal to three. And then of course a four is four. Um, a four and a one is five. A four and a two is six. A four, a two plus a one is, is seven. So that's simple enough. And then if this, this uh, first bit here is, is indicating our negative sign, then we can go backwards too. So if we have a negative one, that's negative one. A negative two, a negative, you know, two and a one is three. And then a negative, negative three, negative four. Uh, negative, you know, four and a one is five with a negative is negative five. Uh, four and a two is six, so this is negative six. And then a four plus two plus one is seven, and, and that's a negative seven. And so this is our sign bit. Um, and so this first bit is our sign bit, and then these other bits are just our one, two, and four place. Simple enough. A couple weird things about this, though. One is that you notice there's a negative zero, right? Because you can have zero, 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 and then it can either be a zero in the sign bit place or a one in the sign bit place. So that's wasting space. Not only we lost half of our values, we also lose half plus one because this zero is being represented as two things, and why is it negative zero? That's not that's not useful. That's that's a waste. So we have to, we got to figure this out. So you can have you know there's a, there's a difference between zero and negative zero. So that's that's kind of weird. Uh, the other thing that is uh, maybe a little bit inconvenient, we'll look at uh, some some other approaches that uh, that don't have this problem, is if you try to add these things together, things get kind of weird. So let's say we want to add a five and a negative five. So normally five plus negative five, you would expect to get zero. Simple enough. But here if we look at five zero one zero one. And negative five is one one zero one. If we add these together, one plus one is two, which would be a zero, and then carry the one. One plus zero plus zero is one. One plus one again is two, uh, but we'll put that as a zero and carry the one. And then here, one plus one again is two, so a zero and carry the one. So in this case, what we're seeing is five plus a negative five is not zero. It's zero zero one zero, which well, and, and we have a carry. So we have a carry coming out of this 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 one bit uh, that we don't you know if we're working with four bits, we're going to ignore this this carry bit. And so we have zero zero one zero, which is uh, which is two. Yeah, so so the algorithm that we normally use to add things totally does not work. We gotta come up with something something other some other way. And they, and people did. Well so that's kinda weird. If we're adding five and negative five, we, we wouldn't expect to get two. And you can try adding some other things here. It, it doesn't it doesn't work. So let's take a look at, at another uh, scenario here. This is called one's complement. What this is, is again, uh, everything from zero to seven is the same, uh, same same as we saw before. And this first bit here is, is all zero, so we know that these are all positive. Uh, but what we do for the negative numbers is we actually just flip all of the bits. So we take the complement. So this was a hack. Uh, like, okay, we got this problem over here, but can we like, okay, what can we do? So they just said, well, what if we flip everything? <laughs> and they came up with this scheme, which was like the first stab at I was like, whoa, okay, this kind of works. Let's go. Complement of all of the bits. So, you know, two here is zero, one, zero. Well, zero, zero, one, zero. Negative two is one, one, zero, one. So we're just flipping each of those bits. Uh, so we flip the zero for a one, we flip the one for a zero, we flip the zero for a one, and so on. If you look at each of these numbers, so five is zero, one, zero, one, negative five is one, zero, one, zero. So what happens with, with this? So we still have this kind of strange thing where we have negative zero, we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, but what we can do is we can try to you know, add some numbers. So if we add five, so zero, one, zero, one, so that's five, uh, and negative five, one, zero, one, zero, if we add those, adding negative five here, uh, what we end up getting is one plus zero is one, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 1 is 1. We get 1, 1, 1, 1, which is negative 0. So that's so that worked out. That's pretty cool that that worked. I wouldn't have expected it to work that way, but okay. Sir, right? Uh, you know, 5 minus 5, you expect to get 0. Negative 0 is, I guess, the same thing. So that's pretty good. Um, and, and that actually works for any of these. You know, we can do uh, 3 minus 3, or 3. So 3 is uh, 0, 0, 1, 1. Negative 3 is 1, 1, 0, 0. So this is 3 plus negative 3. If we add these together, so 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, we get 1, 1, 1, 1 again. Uh, and so again, 3 minus 3 is negative. It is really good to do this on paper at least a couple of times. You only do it once. But go through this exercise a few times and, and do the math yourself so you underst kind of understand what that's going on. Because once you understand, it's like, okay, there are some very clever things that can go on. and come out of the You don't have to know all the steps and memorize all the, the algorithms. That's not important. What, no, what is important is... There are there's some clever things you can do by manipulating these things. And this is like one of the introductions that's like, okay, there's an obvious way of doing things 
And then maybe a not so obvious way. And then there's like a really actually, okay, refined way. And that's kind of the point of this exercise is to let you know it's like, yes, there's levels to the game, right? <laughs> there's this one that you come into, which will get the job done. And and they did with that regular thing with a flip bit thing. They, they worked with it until people go like, hmm, I wonder if there's a way. And it took years. It took years to do this. They got to this one. And they were like, hmm. And then right after they did this one, they kind of came up with the next one, which is even better. Zero. So this is definitely uh, doing doing a lot better than uh, than here where we were saying a uh, five minus five was uh, was two. Uh, that's definitely not right. Uh, so negative zero, definitely a lot closer. Let's try some other some other things, kind of see if we can uh, see a pattern here. So if we did uh, let's say five uh, plus negative three, so five minus three, let's see what we get there. Five is zero one zero one, uh, and uh, negative three is one one zero zero. So one uh, plus zero is one. Zero plus zero is zero. One plus one is two. So we'll put a zero and carry a one. And then one plus one again is two. So we'll put a zero and carry a one. Uh, and so if we ignore this this first bit here, because we're, we're working with four bits, we get one. Uh, so five minus three is one. That's close. It should be two, but you know, let's let's see what happens if we do uh, let's say six minus two or six plus negative two. So six is uh, zero one one zero. Negative two is one one zero one 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 zero one. 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, so put a 0 and carry the 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, so put a 0 and carry the 1. Again, ignore that first bit, because we're working with 4 bits, so 0, 0, 1, 1 is 3. So we're saying 6 minus 2 is 3. Close, um, but, but we're, definitely, we're definitely seeing an interesting pattern here. In fact, if we look, you know, these places where we're getting this negative 0, if we just go down 1, we see 0, which is what we want. Here, 5 minus 3, we'd expect to see 2, but we're seeing 1. So if we just go down 1, we'd actually see a 2. 6 minus 2, we'd expect to see 4, but we're actually getting three. But if we go down one, we get the right answer. So we could just always add one to each of these. Of course, it's kind of weird to say add one to, to negative zero to get to zero. But uh, if you kind of bear with me a minute, you'll see that if we add one to the binary value and it, and it flips over, uh, you do get to the right thing. And here you get to the right thing. So the ones complement, you know, just flipping all of these bits is close. It's very close. It's off by one on all of, on all of our arithmetic. Um, and it also still has that nice property that we saw with the, you know, with the sign bit, which is, you know, you can look at this first bit and you can tell these are all negative numbers. And, and if the first bit is zero, then they're positive numbers. So I just want to say here, this is all super clever, and it, this was a process of discovery because of this problem. This hadn't been really been, you know, hadn't really been explored before. It would this be a very esoteric exercise, but in the context of computers of representing numbers and having a compact space, and and doing you know easy easy algorithms became super important. <laughs> And this is all process of discovery. There was no, they didn't really know starting out that this is this they would find this, that the people that humans would find this, and we'd find this. But we did. Uh, and it's interesting to see how this this goes along. And is it, this is how programmers like what this is kind of our job is to discover things like this. Now, this is just a pattern, but there's all kinds of things that come up in our work that's like this that we can see at the first level. We see all this naive view of things. And as we get into the more of the details and the weeds of it, more detail comes up that we have to take care of. And then another level will come through. It's a really interesting experience for sure. So it seems like the ones complement has a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of nice properties, you know, that, that you'd have in the sign bit. Uh, the one thing that's, you know, well, I guess it's not too bad is that to get from, to invert or to, to negate a number, you know, if you're going from five to negative five with a sign bit, all you have to do is flip one bit. Uh, you just flip that first bit to a one and you get to negative five. Uh, with the one complement, you have to invert each bit. Uh, so it's a little bit more work, uh, but of course, inverting bits is, is pretty easy to do uh, in hardware. If we're building hardware to do this, if we're building a computer, it's going to be doing some math. Uh, so one's complement seems pretty good, uh, but it is off by, by one. So what we can do is look at another scenario, which is two's complement. And if we compare one's complement uh, to two's complement, it's basically the same, except what it does is it gets rid of this negative zero. Uh, so instead of having negative zero, we just go right to negative one. Negative two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the, the kind of weird thing here is we have a negative eight, uh, and we don't have an eight. But the nice, the nice property about this is that all of our math works out very nicely. Ben's the best teacher at this. The teacher I had was pretty good. He kind of came the same angle of approach, but Ben's the best. So if we have five minus five, uh, five here is zero, one, zero, one. And uh, so that's five. And negative five is one, zero, one, one. So one, zero, one, one. And if we add these things, if we add negative five, one plus one is two. So we'll put a zero and carry the one. One plus one is two. So put a zero and carry the one. One plus one is two. So we'll put a zero and carry I want to point out here, the reason why we're always having to add things is because computers don't know how to subtract. We have to simulate it by representing it this way. So we have to use our human clever, clever. It's like the, 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 the binary system doesn't have a sub, there's no sub, yeah, subtract. We have a not, but that's not a subtract. So we have to do this crazy, crazy stuff where we always are adding 
adding, always adding, always adding, always adding. Even though we're, we're kind of simulating a subtraction because how we're representing these these binary digits, but we can only add. That's the first question I had. Sir, I asked my teacher, like, can't we just subtract somehow? I was like, no, computers only add. Only forward. <laughs> Carry the one, and one plus one is two, so we're zero, and we have a, a one that we're carrying. And so you'll notice that each, uh, when, when, we're, when we're looking at the, uh, the negated version of something, when we add each of these uh, place values, we get a two each time, and that's why it's called two's complement. Uh, but in any event, you see that we end up with zero, which is just what we would want when we add a number to its, its uh, inverse. And in fact, you can try it with any of these numbers, uh, and you'll find out that you, you get all zeros. So let's try you know, six minus two. So six is uh, zero, one, one, zero. That's six. And a minus two is one, 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 zero. One, 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 zero. And if we add these together, so if we add our negative two, whoops, negative two, adding negative two there, uh, zero plus zero is zero. One plus one is uh, two. So we'll uh, put a zero and carry the one. One plus one plus one is three. So it's a one and carry a one. And the one plus one is uh, two. So zero and carry a one. And again, we ignore that fifth bit there. And so zero, one, zero, zero is four. And sure enough, six minus two should be equal to four. So this two's complement works works pretty well, uh, and it also has this nice property again that that first bit is a sign bit, right? Because all of these negative numbers have a one there. And what's even more interesting about two's complement is if you look at the place values, it actually makes sense. This is our one's place. This is our two's place. This is our four's place. And this place here, it's you know it looks like a sign bit, but really it's a negative eight's place. And you can see when we have a negative eight and all zeros, we have a negative eight. But if you have a negative eight and a one, you get negative seven, right? Isn't that clever? I thought that I, when I discovered and like worked through this problem myself, I thought this was so clever that, that, that this was the negative eight place that somebody along the line was like, what happens if we make this place a negative eight? Everybody's like, what? No way you can do that. Yes, we can do that. <laughs> if you have negative eight and a four, you get negative four. If you get negative eight plus four plus two plus one, you end up at negative one. Uh, so this this bit, this bit value actually has has a mathematical meaning, which is why our math works out. So it's pretty cool. The one thing that's the thing that's cool about it is it's very clever, and it's very it's like a, it's also a, a twist from the linear thinking that had come before. The complete linear is like we're just gonna do it this way, this way, this more, 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 this way, this way. Well, well like always digits are always integers, always positive, always, and the computers only add. Well, what happens if we make it seem like one of the, we represent one of these things as a negative? Like, wait a second, what? What did you say? <laughs> it's a little bit harder with two's complement is, is negating a number. So if we want to go from a five to a negative five, uh, it's kind of a two-step process, right? So five is zero, one, zero, one. The first thing you have to do is take the one's complement, one, zero, one, zero, so flip all the bits. So you're just inverting everything. That's, that's easy enough. But then you have to add one. Uh, so you invert and then add one. So to add one to zero, one, zero, one, it's just one, zero, one, one. And then this. So the complement is just flip it. And the one, the two's complement is flip it and add one. Okay. Invert, so this is five, then we invert it, and then we add one, and that gets us to uh, negative five. And you see negative five, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one. So it's a little bit more work to go from a positive number to, to its inverse, uh, because you have to invert it and then add one. Uh, but... And they add one because remember there was that zero missing? The zero is a zero here? That is, so that has to adjust for that missing zero. That's clever. I just thought it's really like ingenious. And there's just, you know, there are a lot of smart people who share these solutions, which is awesome. It's like internet made this thing of the totally a thing. But this was one of the first like exercises that so show you that there's more than meets the eye here. And some of the some of the solutions are deep. And you might have to think a little bit. You might have to work through, you might have to actually live with it for a little while before the next solution shows up. But what you'll see uh, you know, in the next video when we, when we build a, a circuit that can add and subtract, uh, you'll see that it's, it's actually not too hard to build, uh, to build this in hardware. Yeah, you can go look you at that. Familiar with you can go look that up uh, on there. But that's um, that's the one of the first things. So it is really useful to go do that exercise. And the next one is floating point number. Like, oh, okay, how? What is going on with the floating point numbers? Because when you first see it, how they're like in, in memory, how that what the rep is like. This is not a two's complement. This is something totally different. Uh, and let's go check it out. And and wh why are the values? Why can't I do? When I can't? Why can't I compare them equal in values? So here we're doing a, a, an example in Python, but it's all C like. This is uh, it's very straightforward. Hey everyone, have you ever encountered this while programming? Let's say I have two variables here, x and y, where x is 0 0.7 and y is 0 0.6, and then I try to print x plus y down here. Well, we can run this, and we're gonna expect 1.3, except we don't get that. We get what the heck is all that? 
This 1.2999 repeating. Well, that's not right. So what's going on here? Well, this is a perfect example of the nature of floating point numbers. You see, floating point numbers have a hard time representing certain numbers. The same can be said about our traditional base 10 numbering system. For example, what is one third in base 10 notation? Well, it's 0 0.333 repeating. And we can never actually represent the true number of one third. We can get more accurate by adding more. Th same with pi. Same with E. Threes, but we're never able to actually write one third in base 10. Well, this is the same phenomenon that is occurring here with base two. And I'm gonna break this down and show you exactly what's going on here. So let's jump right into it. So here we have our example 1.3. And as you saw before, floating point notation is not able to actually represent 1.3. So this is a good example. So the first thing we want to do is turn 1.3 into binary. So here we have a table to convert to binary. And this is a, a standard notation called IEEE. It's just a standard, it means like international electronic engineers, something. Uh, it, so they all get together and they decide, okay, look, I know where everyone's doing this thing their own different way and it's all pretty much doing the same thing. Can we just like agree on just doing it this way or one way that incorporates most of the stuff, at least for most of the people, you can still do your custom thing if you need to, but like, can we agree on this for at least on the computers so we can use these floating point hardware chips? Or can we do that? <laughs> where the left side of the decimal place is our integer side and the right side of the decimal place is our decimal side. On the integer side, we just have our one and on the decimal side, we have our 0 0.3. So over on the integer side, it's pretty simple. One base 10 is the same as one in binary. So we can just set that to one. And over here on our decimal side, we're going to use a little trick here. First, let's take our 0 0.3 and then we're going to multiply it. No, there's always two, but divide by two, 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 divide by two. That's because uh, computers, man, we only know how to, to multiply by two, divide by two, <laughs> inherently. I mean, because powers of two, right? Because that's our representation. By two, and this will give us 0 0.6. And on the left side of that decimal place is zero, it's 0 0.6. So we're just gonna add zero to this first spot. And so now we wanna pull our answer 0 0.6 down and multiply it by two. And 0 0.6 times two gives us 1.2. And so now we have a one to the left of the decimal. So we want to remove that one and place it in that binary slot. And so now we have 0 0.2 and we'll move that down and multiply it by two to get 0 0.4. And we have a zero to the left of the decimal. So we'll set it to zero in the binary slot and we'll keep going on with this pattern. And so you'll notice here that this pattern will just repeat forever to try to represent that 0.3. The only problem is computers can't hold infinite bits and your computer is either a 32 bit or a 64 bit computer. So you can see we're trying to represent that 0.3 starts to become a problem. Let's convert this 1.3 into 30. Right, so in math, we just represent it with that little symbol, little line over the last digit, right? So it just repeats, or the segment that repeats, right? Those digits repeat, that's the notation. So math, we go, oh yeah, this could go on. Literally, we can just conceive it, just goes on forever. And we can you know, manipulate that, but the computer's like, no, this is not forever. What are you talking about, man? That says, that's not a thing, right? We have clock cycles, we have discrete things, there's an instruction coming in, there's a length of the instruction. Yeah, we have to, it's all discrete. So we gotta bring this back down to reality. So. We have a limit, right? So the limits are usually 32 bits or 16 bits, 64 bits of how big, how many, how wide this, you know, number of bits we're gonna use to represent this value. YouTube bit floating point notation to really understand what's going on here. So first of all, starting from the right side, we have 23 bits dedicated to our mantissa. We have eight bits dedicated to our exponent and we have one bit all the way to the left to represent our sine bit. So the first thing we want to- This is fancy, fancy words for like, you know, the exponent is like how, what is it? Times 10, times 1,000, times 100,000, times a times a billion times a trillion. And this is like, well, it's 0 .6, 0 0.6 times a billion or 0 0.7 times a billion. This is actually the real value. This is the multiplier. That's it, that's that's all. It's more multiplication. Ooh, multiplication? Oh, really? To do before moving anything over is to move our decimal and our number to the right of the leftmost one in our number. And it looks like we're already in that position, so we don't need to move our decimal anywhere. Next, we can essentially just forget about that one and the decimal because it's always assumed to be right here when reading floating point numbers. Now let's add the decimal side of our number to our mantissa. And remember this pattern for the decimal side is just repeating, so we will fill the rest in following suit. Right, so the computer requires you like, what do you mean repeating? Well, I mean, we could have coded this to say like, oh, you know, was, you know so these four bits, if they're all, all one, <laughs> then it means repeating. But no, it's easier just to fill in the rest of the bits that would be there if they repeated. That's what's going on there. Over here we have our sign bit, and since it's a positive number, we'll add a zero here. Next is our exponent. And you remember the step where we needed to move our decimal to the right of the leftmost one? Well, if you did that, your exponent would be equal to how many spaces you moved. For example, if you move to the left three spots, your exponent would be a positive three. And if you move to the right three spots, your exponent would be a negative three. And since we didn't move our decimal at all, our exponent is just a zero. Now, this exponent doesn't look like a zero at all. This is because whatever your exponent is, you'll want to add 127 to that and convert it to binary. This
It's like a two's complement kind of deal. This is a way to allow for negative exponents. For example, exactly, which is why I talked about the two's complement before this. <laughs> if my exponent was a negative one twenty-seven, I would add one twenty-seven. So they're using this thing with some positive and negative numbers with the two's complement. If you didn't know that, be like, why is this? This is a zero. This is like a one. No, this doesn't make any sense. Okay, that's the reason why. Went to that and get zero. So I would put all binary zeros if my exponent was a negative one twenty-seven. Using this method, thirty-two bit floating point numbers can span from negative one twenty-seven to positive one twenty-eight for the exponent. So here we have it. So I can raise something to the power of negative one twenty-seven to one twenty to positive one twenty-eight. That's a big range. It's one hundred twenty-eight zeros after the, the value. So five, four to, and then you know a billion is what? What nine nine zeros? A trillion is what uh, thirteen zeros? We're talking about one hundred twenty-eight zeros <laughs> or negative one hundred twenty. So it's like you know it's tiny, tiny, tiny. Like a tenth of an inch, a hundredth of an inch. That's three. That's minus three. A thousand of an inch is minus four. My, a ten thousand of it, so we're talking about negative one hundred twenty seven. So it's a, woo, <laughs> that really small. Okay. All thirty two bits trying to represent one point three. The only problem is thirty two bits isn't enough. In fact, no bits are enough. We would need an infinite amount of bits to continue that pattern in the mantissa. Right. If we wanted to be mathematically calculated, correct. But this down here, this level of precision, I mean, it depends on what you're doing, right? You, that's plenty enough. Now, if you're doing, uh, uh, so this is for scientific calculations, right? Or engineering calculations. Now, if you're doing money, you're going to want to use integers. Always, always use integers when you're calculating money. And as you can probably guess, using 64 bits will increase our precision because we have more bits to use in our mantissa. So switching back to our original example, you'll see my answer is a little more precise. That's because my computer is 64 bit. Okay, so what now? Are we supposed to just deal with this? Well, Python has a built-in library called decimal to deal with this issue. So to fix this, we can do from decimal, import decimal. All right, so this is swapping out this IEEE fraction implementation for something that actually uses decimal digits. So there's only at so many places, the places stop, that's it. And that way you can have these calculations where things can be equal. Then for our X, let's do decimal and we will enclose our 0 0.7 as a string inside of this decimal function. And let's do the same for our 0 0.6. And so it's using a library to, implement this functionality that allows you to get over this problem uh, of this weird rounding error. Let's, now we can try to run on. this again, and there we go. Now we have our 1.3 that we were yeah, looking for. And there's, there's similar libraries for all the languages, but the built-in stuff usually works with this IEEE stuff because that's what we're used to, I guess. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions regarding something I may have unclearly all explained, right. please leave a comment. Yeah, there you go. So you can go in here and you can play with I'll leave links to all this stuff. What this looks like when you use different values. Like here's a one, here's a zero. You can see the thing coming up here and here's one. Look, it's, it totally changes it to the two's complement because it's now a zero, I think, or a one. Uh, and then it shows you how each one of these bits here will do this neat little math formula for these different numbers. So like big numbers like, you know, like Shows you how the math. So it's putting this number and adding it to these sequence uh, of numbers. And in computer code, it looks like this. If you type this in, uh, well, one half is, well, you could do one slash two. You could do that. Uh, you could type in the computer code here, or you could just type this in, and it's all the same stuff. And uh, so it shows you how these bits, it's just right here, marching up, and it shows you how they do the fractional thing. That's why it'll always be some weird number, because when you divide, one by 2048 it's some bizarro number and sometimes they'll, they're not gonna like make sense so you can never make you never try to make never try to use equals with floating points ever if they could be greater than one greater than each other or less than each other but never equal that's why he said you gotta use this big decimal thing it's like okay that uses a completely different implementation doesn't use that ieee stuff it actually uses you know the raw numbers uh, and, and none of that div division stuff. That's the problem. So I left a couple ways of pl playing with this stuff. You can go in here, you know, and have different implementations and shows shows the details here. Now I found a little bug on this one. This, this first digit right here shouldn't be here. But other than this, this, this is really great. It shows the mathematical formula. Again, another way of showing it. And there's another one here um, showing the floating point representation. And then there's a double when they use up 64 bits if you were like, more precision this is for space flight stuff you know like long distances that you need to have precise at at the point where you're making the calculations because the space because the spaceship's so small so yeah so you have 64 bits which is plenty more, more i don't know if you need more than that 
unless you're going uh, interstellar or intergalactic, maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, do, do, do. That is about it for this right in this section. We're going to get into characters and letters next.